Hello, everybody. <clears throat> um, this is kind of a response video. So, there's that. And um, the response is to a response video to a live stream. That's very confusing, I know. Um, but it was something that um, came up, and as a reader, I felt a certain way about it, and as a writer, I felt a certain way about it. So, um, let's just get into this. So, um, the other day, um, it was yesterday actually, a video popped up in my feed um, by Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats, um, which, try to say that five times fast. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and it was about trigger warnings and um, trigger warnings in books. And I haven't seen this yet. Um, but her video was talking about a live stream that um, everyone who reads Must Converse um, did with, um, there were a bunch of people on it, um, but the idea was, was that there are books that actually have, like, a page of trigger warnings, so, like, you could, like, open a book up, and it'll say, like, um, I don't know, like, if you think snails are gross, and alcoholism, I don't know why I said snails, um, alcoholism, drug use, uh, racism, if any of these things trigger you, you know, don't read the book. And, um, I was like, and I've heard of this before, but I, I've never seen it. Um, and I just thought that was, that that's like a crazy thing to do. But, um, when they were talking about it on the live stream, they were talking about it um, because that is something that is done in young adult novels. And um, it's starting, I guess, to go into more literary stuff. And um, this might be a total generational thing. And that's why I'm having such a hard time with it. But the way I see it is if you're writing teen or young adult novels and you have to put a page of trigger warnings in, maybe the audience you're writing that book for is not ready, is not mature enough to handle such topics. Um, and some of you might think that's a very cold um, way to think about it. But, um, like, YA wasn't, like, a thing when I was growing up. So I don't have the... Um, same, I guess, experience as, like, my kid would have, um, dealing with literature, but I don't think dealing with literature, like, that just sounds so, like, fascist, but, um, like, we read, like, in fifth grade, and on that live stream, they were talking about, um, being haunted by, like, where the red fern grows, you know, um, but the books that we read, like, I remember in fifth grade, um, that was, like, the first grade I was in where, um, reading literature and having to, like, everyone in the classroom gets a copy of a book, um, that we had to go through. And I remember we read Across Five Aprils, which is about the Civil War, and A Taste of Blackberries, 
which I think, and I've, I think I've talked about this before even, but I think the movie My Girl with Macaulay Culkin was based on A Taste of Blackberries. I could be completely off on that. But um, both of those books, like, hit me emotionally as a kid, you know. Um, I can't even remember what Across Five Aprils is about anymore. But I remember, like, for the next, like, three years, I would tell everyone that that was my favorite book. <laughs> um, but, uh, like, I couldn't tell you anything about it other than it was about the Civil War and the emotions I had when we had to, like, read it and stuff. Um, and A Taste of Blackberries made me cry, like, it was, and seeing My Girl made me cry, I remember I went and saw that with just my stepdad, and my mom didn't want to go for some reason, and when we were driving home, I had to, like, turn my head and look out the window, um, as tears rolled down my cheeks, because I couldn't let my stepdad see me cry, oh my gosh, that's so funny, um, but anyway, so we went as kids from, you know, reading Shel Silverstein, which I guess you're not supposed to do anymore, um, but reading, like, Shel Silverstein to, like, Judy Bloom to, um, like, Lord of the Flies to reading Stephen King by the time you were 13, you know? And, um, that was just literature, you know? Like, I remember, um, I was reading Edgar Allan Poe and, um, that fucking awful Jim Morrison poetry book that I thought was so great, like, in seventh grade, you know? Um, and the topics in those books were so crazy. And that's just, like, why, like, when I was, like, 14, like, 14, and I read Naked Lunch, like, that book blew me away because I couldn't believe the words I was reading. Like, everything was, like, I'm, like, this is, like, this guy's got balls, dude. He's writing crazy stuff here. Um... But now, like, that's not okay, like, I guess. Because you have all of these, like, stages of reading that you, like, go through. And, um, but, like, I really believe that, like, dealing with adult themes is how you become an adult, you know? Like, you become an adult by learning and dealing and maturing and if there are certain things that you can't read like I mean is it the same thing with like music like are there certain like lyrics you can't hear because it'll trigger something like and what does triggering mean like are you just going to get upset? Are you going to feel uncomfortable? Or are you going to, like, completely break down and have some, like, PTSD thing? And I'm not saying this to be a dick. I have PTSD, you know? Like, I'm saying this because I just want to put into perspective the idea of being able to enjoy art for the sake of it being art and not for the sake of if it makes you feel okay because all through history like art has supposed art has been there to make you question to make you feel to make you change and if you think about yourself right now and think about like as I'm talking right now I'm sure every single person watching this in their mind is playing a, a scene of something that they read in a book that really stuck with them. Whether it bothered you or whether it blew you away, that scene has played in your head while I've been talking. 
And that's what art is supposed to do. It's not supposed to be like cotton candy gumdrops and feather pillows, you know? Like, it's supposed to cut you. It's supposed to make you bleed. You know, that's what art is. And if you take that ability away from an artist to try to push you as someone viewing the art into a new world or a new state of being, you are not only depriving yourself and depriving this artist, but you're depriving the world, you know? And some of you might be going, yeah, but you know what? Like, rape isn't art. That's a real thing. I understand. It's a real thing. It's a real thing that people go through. And seeing how someone goes through that and how they make it out and how they like, survive that, that's an important thing to know, and, like, you shouldn't be chat, chat, you shouldn't be coming down on an artist for doing that, and you shouldn't be coming down on readers who don't mind reading about that, and here's the big for instance, like, me, um, I had a shitty dad, he left my mom when I was like three weeks old and he was violent and kind of a dick and um, we didn't really spend much time together and as I got older I learned more stuff about him and it made me like him a lot less. So when I read books that have horrible parents for horrible parents sake I immediately dislike that character and if it happens repeatedly I will dislike that author and that's probably one of the problems I have with Stephen King because Stephen King can write amazing coming of age stories but when Stephen King has to write parents it's almost like he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. And he's a parent on top of it. So it's like, how could a man with children not have the slightest fucking idea how to write a kid, like a dad? Like, this doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and that's one of my beefs with Stephen King. Does that make me not read his stuff? No. Does it make me, like, get upset about my life? No. Because I'm a grown-up, I'm an adult, and I'm reading a book, you know? Um, that book isn't going to, like, put me in the madhouse, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just a book. And it that, that boggles my mind. Now, coming back to this... Um, from a writer's standpoint, I have a few books that I wrote when I was much younger that um, when I was writing them, like there are a couple that are like splatterpunk, horror kind of stuff, and then there's a couple that are like humorous. But in the climate of today, I feel like I shouldn't have those books out because people, people are nuts. Like, I don't know a better way of saying it. Um, and they jump on shit so fast and want to like cancel stuff and tear stuff down all the fucking time that I'm just like, look. I like those books, like, those books are a part of me from many, many years ago, but I don't want to have to argue my artistic freedom to a bunch of 15-year-olds on Twitter, you know? Um, and it might sound like I'm downplaying 
society here. And um, that is not my intention. I just don't think very highly of society. So, <laughs> um, unless society could prove me wrong, you know, the ball's in their court. But, so, like, I took those books down a while ago. And it really kind of bums me out because two of those books used to sell really good in Germany. That's all I'm saying. Um, but, uh, I don't know. It just, it kind of sucks. Like, you're policing art. And it really chaps my hide, I guess. Um, but... The, the whole point of this is that if I write a splatterpunk book, I would assume people who don't like graphic violence or gratuitous violence or graphic scenes of any nature, you shouldn't fucking be reading a splatterpunk book. You know, like, Jesus Christ. Um, it's just like... If you're an alcoholic, don't hang out in a bar. Might not be exactly like that, but... Or if you're a recovering alcoholic, I should say. Because if you are an alcoholic and you're cool with that, hanging out in a bar might be the greatest thing ever. But, um... Yeah, it's just... I do not like any type of... Um... society or the government or the church or anybody like that any group of people telling an artist that they can't do something um that's like oh that's that's like one of the one of my pet peeves let's say because i deal with this so much but um I don't know, like, I feel like every step we take in these directions with trigger warnings and um, canceling books or canceling authors or not teaching To Kill a Mockingbird in school anymore or um, anything like this, every time you do something like this, the line will get pushed a little further every few years because that how far you push that line the first time becomes the norm. And once that becomes the norm, there will need to be something else done to make people feel like a difference has been made. So the people who need those differences being made um, will keep pushing. And as an artist... I don't want that to happen. And as a reader, a free thinker, I don't want that to happen. I don't want someone to tell me what I can and can't have come into my mind. You know? Like, I'm a fucking grown-ass man. I can make my own decisions. I know racism is bad. I know rape is bad. I know misogyny is bad. Equality is good. I know all of these things. You know? I'm a fucking adult. <laughs> so it's like, um, like I don't need a bunch of people on Twitter or a bunch of people in the publishing houses of New York to tell me what I can and can't listen to or read or, I mean, fuck, can you imagine going into a fucking, um, museum and they're like you're about to go see the works of Michelangelo and then there's like all these trigger warnings because there's going to be some boobs and little tiny penises like <laughs> it's just it's fucking ludicrous like if you start like really like knocking the stuff down it's like come on people just fucking let art be art if you don't want to look at it close your fucking eyes um but yeah, so, I don't know. Um, 
if you can't handle adult content, keep reading YA and just have that be your, your thing. Um, and if you're happy with it, good. And that's that. So um, I would love to hear your thoughts about this. Um, I will try to remember to um, link the videos I mentioned um, down below. So take care, everybody.